Welcome back to my channel. I'm Maria Killam, and this week we're talking about the 10 steps to planning your timeless new build. You know, a lot of people, when they are thinking about choosing finishes, they're thinking like, hey, like, I got this. Like, I know what I love, right? I mean, the opportunity to build your own house is a dream for so many people. And if you are in the fortunate position of being able to build your own home, my goal is to help you make it as timeless as possible. If this is the first house that you've ever built, this is you're really gonna wanna listen up because once you've lived in any home past a trend cycle, when that trend has died, and now you're in love with the next trend cycle that comes along, well, you will be real happy that you watched this episode of my How to Have a Timeless Home. Now, January and February is new build season, and this is when my e-design department is the busiest, helping clients all over North America to choose colors and finishes for exterior, interior, everything you need. So before we get started, I wanna talk about the order of the decisions that need to be made when building a new home. In the beginning, the conversation after that is becomes more about what's gonna look good with what you've already chosen and less about what you love. So many people think that they have to be in love with every single choice that they make and really what you end up with is a mishmash of, oh, look at me, look at me, backsplash, look at me, look at me, countertop. So you want all of the finishes that you choose to work together beautifully. And that's why we're gonna talk about what comes first. The first choice you're gonna make is your flooring. The two best timeless options are light maple, pale oak, or a medium brown look. Stay far, far away from anything gray if you want the most timeless look. Now, if you want tile floors in your kitchen, there's actually very few tiles that are timeless. There's so many blotchy, busy, bad porcelain tiles out there. Stay away from the 12 by 24 basic tile if you want your kitchen to be timeless. The number one rule that you need to think about if you're choosing tile for your kitchen, since that's going to be your main room that we're choosing tile for, your bathrooms as well, certainly, but you want to make sure that you have one pattern in the room. So if you choose a pattern countertop, your floor tile has to be relatively solid. Perhaps a check could work. However, solid is what you want your floor tile to be. If you have a patterned floor tile, then your countertop needs to be solid. And you want your countertop and your tile floor to also look like they're married right? They should look like they belong together and they're riding off into the sunset to live happily ever after. Number two, choose your foundation palette next. And what that means is which world of white are you going to be in? This is my understanding undertones uh, neutral color wheel that's available on my website. I'll post the link below. And on the back, I have the four most useful whites. So are you going to be in blue white, true white, off white, or cream? Off-white is probably where I would recommend that you live. For example, if you have a builder breathing down your neck and they want to know what is your cabinet color, what is your trim color, off-white is generally a good place to be and the best off-whites you can find in my White is Complicated ebook. That link is below as well. Number three, choose your countertops next because your countertop dictates your foundation palette more than anything else will anyway. So for example, if you choose a Carrera countertop, like in this image, your choices for your cabinet color are quite wide. You could go with a blue white because Carrera has a blue gray undertone. You could go with an off white or you could go with a complex cream. Like that's a huge trending look right now as well as any color will work as long as it's not too earthy, for example, with Carrera countertops. Now the definition of classic and timeless design is, will I be stuck in a particular color scheme forever? That is the question you're gonna to wanna to keep asking yourself as you choose finishes throughout your home. Or with pattern, ask yourself, would I get bored of this in approximately 10 minutes? And the answer is usually yes. So then set that aside, I know it's like being in a kid in a candy store when you are in a tile shop, but I'm telling you right now that boring now equals timeless forever. Number four is backsplash tile. And if you wanna keep it timeless, I would suggest something in the world of white or cream. Subway tile is usually the answer. However, this is one finish that is installed at the very, very end. So you could wait to decide on what your backsplash tile is actually going to be. Number five 
is your fireplace. Now this isn't obvious to a lot of people, but your fireplace should relate to your kitchen. So I would stay away from a stone fireplace unless you're building a cottage by the lake or a rustic cabin in the woods. I would always prefer to see a millwork fireplace that relates to your kitchen millwork with a timeless surround and then you'll love it forever. Number six, bathroom, tile, and countertops. So if you're installing a traditional bathroom because most people are designing traditional homes, then small scale tile always looks the most timeless. That's just what you would expect to see when you walk into any bathroom like this basket weave in this bathroom or a hex tile. You could even do a larger five or six inch hex tile and then a white countertop. This way you can change the colors in your bathroom forever just like this bathroom in my last house. I did a black and white tile floor, a black countertop. Notice that's the only two places that I repeated the black and then again in my framed art everything else was polished nickel in this room and my bathroom will look timeless forever instead of oh we built our house in the black and white trend because every single finish in the bathroom is black. You want to avoid that look for the most timeless look. Number seven is your bathroom vanity. Now, if you're with me so far and you're on board with choosing the world of white marble, white or cream finishes for your tile, surround and countertops, then a wood stain vanity is also a lovely choice because it adds contrast and looks elegant with white finishes. A color is also really pretty. Like in my primary bathroom, I painted my cabinets a blue green shade and create flow from my bedroom. Number eight is hardware. Now most people think this is easy. You just take that four inch pole and you slap it on everything, but that really never looks like a designer was there. So if you want it to look a little more thoughtful and like you spent some time choosing the right details, you wanna install a knob on all your doors and a pull on your drawers in a bathroom where it's a, always a small vanity, a lot less millwork is in there. You're good with all knobs. Now, if you want to keep it easy on yourself and you want to just choose knobs or pulls for your entire kitchen, then just go with knob. That will look way nicer, way cleaner, and lots of designers do it. Nine is lighting. Now, a lot of people will ask me, Maria, can you do some videos on timeless lighting choices? And I'm here to tell you that it took me many years to get good at choosing lighting because lighting is custom to each house that it's in. So for example, the chandelier in my current kitchen that I just put in, if that same chandelier had been in the house with the furniture that was in the house with the previous homeowners, it would have been terrible. Right, so that's the reason why there's a lot of ugly builder lighting out there. You probably hate the lighting that you inherited with the house that you moved into. So if you wanna work with me to get all your finishes and colors right, I will also include coordinated lighting for your new build so that you can sleep at night and not waste money on buying the wrong Number lighting. Number 10 is paint colors. You'll notice that I've waited till the very end to mention them and that is because paint colors should always be chosen dead last after you have made all of your other choices. This way it makes it easy to see which relates to what. For example, if you have a countertop that is taupe, you might then distinguish using the wheel that you've got a taupe countertop. Then you would go to my How to Choose Paint Colors ebook. Then you scroll down and you find the taupe section. Perhaps a taupe grayish might be then a great open layout paint color for you because it's a much better, warmer color than just choosing white or off-white, which at this stage in this trend will look like you just called it into your builder and didn't even show up. Now, my e-design clients for a few years now have been asking me for a warmer white. Oh, oh, you mean, you mean beige, but you know, people were a bit allergic to beige after the Tuscan trend, but you know, it's, it's now been 15 to 20 years since that trend. So beige is coming back and I would recommend a warm complex cream in either a pink beige, yellow beige, green beige, orange beige, which are all found in my bonus book of colors in either of my eBooks. If you're planning your 2024 renovation or new build before diving in, assess your readiness. If you want to discover whether you're on track for a timeless and regret-free project, you'll want to attend my free webinar on January 30th at three o'clock Pacific Standard Time, 
where we're gonna learn how to navigate your new build or renovation projects without regrets. So if you're ready to discover what you need to know, this event is free and open to the public, and I'll post the links below where you can register. And if you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.